Hey, do you know what? This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Probably one of our biggest mistakes in our life is that we try to fit God into our day instead of fitting our day into God. If we would get up in the morning and commit our day to the Lord and say, Lord, everything I do today, I want you to be the one that directs it. And if we do that, then we're asking God for guidance. Otherwise, we're telling God what we want Him to do. Say, God, I'm going over here and do this or that. You go with me. God may not want to go with you over there and do this or that you're doing. He may have had another plan for you that day. If, if you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin, come into your heart and save your wretched soul, then you owe him benevolence on a daily basis. If you don't give him benevolence on a daily basis, you're failing. You're failing not only yourself, but you're failing God. Are we, are we real in this thing? Are we real in this world? Are we really following God? When, when we can spend more time reading the newspaper than we do the Bible. If we can spend more time eating than we do praying. We spend more time uh, doing everything. Leaving God out. I'm guilty. I'm a preacher. And I'm guilty. By very self. Of not having a structural one hour, one on one with God in one direction at one time. Every single day at the same time, same hour, same place, same thing. So, do you think there is 24 hours in a day? Do you know what that means? You owe God uh, 10% of 24 hours on a daily basis. There's 168 hours in a week. You owe 16.8 hours to God. That means you owe Him right at two hours. Uh, well, actually, uh, a little bit more than that. Two hours and ten minutes, we'll say, a day. A day of time concentrating on Him. Time reading His Word. Time saying, God, would you have me, what would you have me to do? What time would you have me to get up and go down here and witness at a service station, all night service station? What time would you have me do this? Would you speak to me and let me know when the time's right? Would you say, hey, get up. And you look at the clock and you say, Lord, Lord, <laughs> uh, oh goodness, it's only 12.30 and uh, I've only been in bed an hour and a half. And the Lord will say, I don't care how long you've been in bed, there's somebody coming in that station down there, got a Tennessee tag on their car. When you pull in, you're going to pull in behind them. And they're going to come out of the store. And they've already paid the gas and paid for it. And on their way to the car, you interrupt them a little bit. And you give them one of your tracks. And you say, sir, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? And you break the ice and get the conversation going. And I'll do the rest. I'll have him prepared. And I've done it, and God's had him prepared, and I've won a man to the Lord. Or I've had people say, hey, I'm going to a funeral. Uh, somebody, my mother just died, or something happened, or, or something. I'm going to a funeral. I needed that. I needed some confidence from God. And that's what we're to do. We, if we'll follow what the Lord says, for to me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Philippians 1.21 I used that verse already today in another excerpt. 
That is our mainstay verse. That for me to live is to die. But for Christ to live in me is gain. Wow. He hath quickened those who were dead in trespasses and sin. He quickened me when I was a, a drunk. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 10, 39. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, listen to that, dwells in you, and he does if you're saved and in me, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. How? By his spirit that dwelleth in you. The spirit's already in you. If you've said, Jesus, I'm a sinner, forgive me of my sin, come into my heart and save my soul. He's already forgiven you. He's already uh, got you in the place to where he can use you if you'll get out there and do it. Do you know that in Ephesians 2 and 6 said, And he hath raised us up together already and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus Positionally, as in a mirror, we are already positioned, even though we're down here on this earth, in that mirror of Jesus Christ. I like to look at it this way, that glassy sea before God. That great glassy sea before God with all the sins, I would say, of the world are buried in them. And you can't look through the shine and see them. They're gone. But Jesus looks into that glassy sea and sees our reflection here on the earth. And says, I have, a, I have a son down there named Peter. He's my born-again son. He got born again November 5th at 3 o'clock in the morning, 1972. I snatched him out of an alcohol bottle, out of cussing, swearing, gambling, smoking, drinking, doing all the things that he was doing. I pulled him out of that pit and I brought him up. A picture like Joseph. Joseph was pulled out of the pit by a group of people. And he went through many trials and tribulations through his life and God brought him to the forefront at the end of his life. He became the Sultan of Egypt. And why? Because he was faithful to God. Look at the three Hebrew children. They're thrown in the fire, the fiery furnace, and walked out of them with the Son of God, <laughs> with them. Jesus Christ himself came down in that fire and communed with those boys and said, Hey boys, I like your faith. Because of your faith, I'm here with you. That's a picture of us today. Jesus is with us today, just like he was with them boys in that fire. And he is in us. And we don't have to fret and worry about those things. God is in us. And he's the one doing it for us. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. There's going to be one day we're going to leave this earth and go to heaven and be in heavenly places and we're going to be in that image of God there. But he wants us to bear the image of him down here in honesty, integrity, in fellowship and in his word. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. Hey, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says right there, there is a possibility we will live in the time when we will not sleep. We will be caught up. And Jesus will say, Come up hither and we'll be caught up in the clouds and we'll go through the clouds. And we'll go to be with him forever. In the moment, he said, 
in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Woo-wee. That's fast. At the last trump. Wow. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed incorruptible. Never to be corrupted again. Never to be like on this earth where you die. When you get to heaven, you will be there eternally, forever. Forever. We live in time. It is hard for us to grasp anything beyond an hour or two. We live in time. And time is not what heaven is. Heaven is a place of no time. Where God is. And he has been forever. And he will be there forever and we'll be there with him. How many generations are with him from how many earths? We don't know. We don't know anything really about God. We just know that he exists. We know that what he said is true, that he spoke this world into existence, that he made mankind after his own image, that he put mankind on this earth to replenish this earth, to fill it up with people. And we do know that in the days of Noah, this earth was full of people all the way around it. God went all the way around this earth and said he looked all the way around the earth to see if he could find one righteous. And he found one, Noah. On this whole earth was populated and he found one righteous man. It's getting nearly that way. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. What is on the other side of death for a Christian? Victory. What kind of victory? To be separated from this earthly earth that's tainted by the devil and go to be with a God that is, there is no devil that is only perfect and when you go be with him you're in perfection you're in the perfect place you don't have to worry about anything there is no worry there is no thought of worry <laughs> how about that there isn't just any worry there's no thought of worry Worry doesn't exist. You are in the hand of God, totally in the hand of God. Your mind is wiped clean from the slate of this earth. This earth is no more remembered. What is on this earth is wicked. This earth has doesn't yield good anymore except through the heart and the spirit of God. Otherwise than that, everything is totally wicked. So let's look at another verse here. Wow. So when the corruptible shall have put on end corruption. Man, that's when you got up there. Now you're incorruptible. And this mortal have put on immortality. I, I said a little while ago in an excerpt that uh, last month, my wife uh, left for heaven. She got on that load that was leaving that day, and she left out for heaven. And this is where she is, in a better place. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. She is a victorious woman. She has got the victory over death and over hell and over sin and over everything and she's with God now the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with God wow oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory the sting of death has been taken away for those who are saved 
The sting of death is the man that's going to hell. That has never said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. He is going to go to hell. He has the sting of death on him. But the grave has no sting. And the victory is, is that you are instantly are standing with the Father in heaven. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Are you steadfast? I can say to myself, am I steadfast? I work at it. I work at it. I work at it. I work at it. Unmovable. I work at it. I work at it. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. I work at it. I work at it. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 58. Our labor is not in vain. Every single solitary thing we do during the day in the labor of the love and the labor of the Lord is not in vain. Do you know that not one second passes that's not written down in the annals in front of God? Every thought? That's why we need to stay prayed up. That's why we need to say God all the time, Lord, forgive me for slackness in my life. Forgive me for the little sins. The Bible said the little foxes get the grapes. What he's saying there is there are uh, things that will come in and rob you from the good if you allow them to. Don't allow them to do that. For since by one man came death, By man came also the resurrection of the dead. It was one man that sinned, and God used one man to do away with sin. Adam sinned that one man put past sin into every human being on the earth. And Jesus Christ came to take away sin from every human being on the earth that will say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, mm, mm, mm. and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Whew. Boy, oh boy. I do not believe that we, who are Christians, who are under the resurrection of life, will watch the damned be cast into hell. But I do believe that the damned that are going to be cast into hell will watch those who are going to be put in heaven. If you reverse that scenario, it would not be heaven. If we had to watch those be cast into hell, I believe God's going to protect us from that. That's going to be His doing and not ours. We'll be with Him, yes. But the physical ability that we have today will not be the same. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall be taken away off from all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah 25, 8. He said, let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God. He said, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That is John 14, 1 through 3. Let's look at another one, John 10, 27, 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. <laughs> Woo wee! Don't you know the devil is sending people by trying to pluck us out of the hand of God on a daily basis? And God said it's not going to happen. I'm not going to let it happen. Wow. Wow. My wife's in heaven right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And my wife is nine. There's nine people in that picture. And she's already in heaven. The other eight are still alive. I have a commission to make sure those other eight understand and hear and follow the way of God. That those loved ones around them, if something happens to them, will have the peace that I have that my wife is with the Lord. She is in heaven. And she is with him. And she's in that peaceful, blessed place now to where there is no heartache, no sin, no hunger, no death. <laughs> this cat of mine is fighting me to get over here to walk in front of me. And I'm, I, whoops, I'm trying to keep her not to do that. And so anyway, here we are, back in the book. Let's get back in the book. And this is the Father's will which he hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise up again in the last day. He's going to raise him up again in the last day. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. And the, behind that is a word called sila. Now what sila means, stop and muse. Stop and think about it. What you just read and what you just saw. Stop and think about it. That's what that's saying. And we're supposed to do that. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. That is Revelation 3.21. Do you know that Jesus was sent here in a body? He was sent here in a body. And as he came in that body to d deliver us, he went to the cross, which was his Father's will, that he would shed his blood that you and I wouldn't have to shed our blood in the remission of sin deal. That when our blood is shed, it will be a peaceful and a good thing. It won't be hanging on a cross, being nailed up there and having been scourged and whipped. Do you know that the man that was whipping Jesus, when the Bible said Jesus wept, he didn't weep because he was being hurt. He wept for the man scourging him and saying at the same time, man, you do not know it, but I love you. I love you enough to shed a tear for you. That if you don't ask me to save you before you die, you will die and go to hell forever. So therefore, that's why I'm weeping. He wept for us. He did not weep for other reasons. 
And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And that life is in His Son. He was hanging on the cross and He was eternal life. And is eternal life. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God has not life. 1 John 5, 11. Look at Revelation 22 and 5. And there shall be no night there. And no need of a candle even. You won't need anything for light because it will be total light. Need the light of the sun. You're not even going to need the, the light of the sun. You know why? The Son of God is the light. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 22, 5. We are going to reign with God forever and ever. What is his plan? We don't know exactly what God's plan is, but we do know this. That if we're in his plan, we're going to reign with him. We who study the Bible have some ideas of what might be. But do you know you have to use that word might? <laughs> that means it's all supposition. We can't guarantee when we use the word might. We don't know what it's going to be like. We don't know how many earths God has. We don't know how many places that God may use us on the earths. I have this question many times I ask it to people. If God was writing another Bible today, right now, for the new heaven and the new earth, would your name be in it? Would you be would there be a book in there with your name on it? There happens to be a book in the Bible with my name on it. And do you know he was a man like myself? He was a weak little puny man that denied Jesus right in front of him. After being with him immediately, in 15 minutes he denied him and cursed and swore and said, I never knew the man. Had more fear for his own life than he did for that which God gave him. We need to be careful of that. That we don't do the same thing. We're flesh and bone and blood. And we would do the same thing if we're not careful. So let's get back in the book. And I appointed unto you a kingdom. As my father hath appointed unto me. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. I don't feel like I would be a person who could judge those twelve tribes that live by the law. I couldn't follow the law for five minutes. I couldn't follow the law for five seconds. The law was harsh. And required full attention. Wow. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. Wow. For God so loved this world. As I spoke a minute ago about him hanging on the cross. That he gave his son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 He that, he that loveth his life shall lose it. But he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. I hate the things of the world, the, the devil's things. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come unto condemnation, but is passed from death unto death.
to life. We are already passed from death unto life, and we are positionally already there. Even though we're here, we're left here for a purpose, to evangelize. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.